Snacks are here. You know, the hardest part about eating these feed snacks is making them last all month until I get resupplied. Hey, Brian. Oh, no. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I wanted to start out talking a little bit about some radios. So Midland reached out to us and wanted to send us one of their new Micro Mobile GMRS two-way radios. So this is a vehicle mounted uh, GMRS radio. And if you're not familiar with GMRS, I wanted to briefly talk about that radio service as well as say that down in the description we have a link to one of the most comprehensive articles I've ever written at ITS, if I do say it so myself, all about the ultimate guide to radio communications. So I go over absolutely everything you'd ever want to know about FRS radios, GMRS radios, mirrors radio frequencies, just pretty much everything under the sun is covered in that article. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about specific frequencies and licenses and things like that. But what I will say is that GMRS does require an FCC license. And that doesn't mean you have to go take a test for like you do with the ham radio license. Um, this is purely just something you fill out online, pay your 15 bucks, and they send you a certificate and say, hey, whoa, you're licensed. So it's really not that big of a deal. I've done it myself, and it's, it's really not a thing. But the deal is that the, this radio and many GMRS frequencies need to operate on a 5-watt power. So when you start increasing wattage and power, you start making your transmission broadcast uh, how would I say that? It's just more powerful. So um, that being said, the FCC requires you to have a license to operate on powers like that. So that's kind of what it is. I mean, yes, it has something to do with the actual frequency range those different freaks are in, uh, but, it, but it really comes down to the power. So as you can see, you know, clearly printed here on the box here on the back is it's a five watt power radio. So um, it also not only handles GMRS channels, but it also handles FRS. So FRS stands for Family Radio Service, and those are like the regular old walkie-talkies you can pick up at Academy, and Midland sent us these too to just kind of talk about, which I'll get into in a second. Um, but those radios operate on the Family Radio uh, Service. So those are very limited in terms of their distance because they operate at a low power. Those are like 0.5 watts compared to 5 watts on something like the GMRS radio. And what that means is they're very limited in scope of how far they can broadcast, even though places print things like up to 38 miles in range, which is a farce, and I'm going to call them out on that because it's true. I mean, really, they test, I don't know where they test this or where they get this number from, um, to be honest with you, but think of it this way. The Earth has a curvature, and if I'm broadcasting to someone 38 miles away, the earth is actually going to curve and there's no way my broadcast is going to reach that person 38 miles away on a half watt power. Um, there's just no way. Even if the earth was perfectly lined and the, the, it was bouncing off the atmosphere, it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to reach them. The way that they measure these more likely is they have somebody on the ground and a huge tower that's, you know, 30 miles in the air and, they, and they're bouncing it like that. Um, but if you were truly to take a stretch of land that's 38 miles long on the Earth's surface, there's no way they would reach, not at a half power or half watt of power. So just to clear that up. So back to the FRS, um, sorry, GMRS. So you do have to be licensed to use this again. Um, they state that in their manual, which you know I pulled up here just so I can repeat exactly what they're saying. Um, they say the MXT100, which is the model that this is, um, operates on GMRS, which is General Mo Mobile Radio Service uh, Frequencies, and requires an FCC license. You must be licensed prior to operating on channels 1 through 7 or 15 through 22. So those are the actual GMRS frequencies that this operates on. Frequencies are hidden from you. You just see a dial that has numbered channels on it with this. So whereas, you know, the usual radios that we like to use, which are the Waksoons and the Baofangs and things like that, you can actually program these radios. And these are um, five watt radios as well. So they'll reach out, um, you know, long distances depending on what you have. So the thing about these is you can program in the actual frequencies you want to use. So GMRS is just an actual frequency range. They're all in the UHF frequency range, which is ultra high frequency. Um, FRS and GMRS are. So you can get specific about what frequencies you actually want the radio to transmit and broadcast on. Um, 
Whereas this is everything set up for you. So that's kind of the benefit of buying a package like this. All you need to do is just go grab that $15 FCC license for GMRS and then boom, you're good to go. You've now got a five watt radio that can transmit on these frequencies, which, you know, these are made, they say to talk to all walkie talkies, but really this is kind of a vehicle mounted thing with a, uh, with a push to talk here. So what's great about this is, you know, similar to CB radio, you can almost kind of be hands free, you know, still with one hand on the wheel while you're in your vehicle um, operating on something like this. It's great for emergency communication. So if, you know, you had one in your vehicle, your wife had one in her vehicle, you, got, you guys can now communicate um, because what this has also got is a magnet mount antenna fits on the top of your car. So what I like about the magnet mount antenna that's in this kit too, is that it's a low profile magnet mount. So it's not a very long whip antenna. It's pretty short, so it's less likely to fall over. That's my, that's my uh, hiccup with, or my complaint with a lot of magnet mount antennas is that one, either the magnets aren't that strong, which I haven't really tested this. That's pretty good, actually. Um, so it's a pretty strong magnet. Um, the other thing is the wind will wind up knocking the antenna over because it's too long. So, um, and it's got a, you know, a standard, uh, radio plug. I cannot remember the name of this. Uh, it's escaping me, sorry. But anyway, it plugs into the back of the radio here. Um, this is the same type of thing that uh, like a CB radio uses, same type of connection. So plugs into the back of that unit and then this actually releases from the mount just like so. So you can screw this mount into your vehicle somewhere, whether it's un under, on the underside of a dash or something like that. Um, and then you can mount this back onto, onto that. And then you've got your controls right here, obviously this. It comes with a little mount as well right here to stick onto your dash and then you can hook the radio on just like that. So that's kind of the whole package. And then this in the back, which I like as well, is that the power adapter just plugs into a regular uh, cigarette lighter adapter, which is nice. So you don't have to actually manually wire this into your vehicle, which, you know, I had to do with my CB radio. So that's a, another cool feature of this too. So like I said, um, I really, I really like this. Uh, I think that it's got a, a very good purpose to it. I obviously haven't used it yet. We just got this in, but I did want to walk through it in some of the radio basics with you just to kind of summarize that stuff. Um, while I didn't really ask for this, they sent it anyway, because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of uh, walkie talkies. I do like the fact that this has uh, NOAA frequencies on it. So, you know, if you're out with a buddy just on, you know, on farmland, you're not more than a couple, I would say, I'd say a mile, mile and a half from each other. Uh, that's probably the accurate range of these things. Um, they, do, they do have rechargeable batteries, which is nice too. So you can dock those and recharge them. I don't know how long they go, obviously, but um, it says you can put regular AA batteries in them too. But, um, so they probably have a specific amount of channels for NOAA. Um, they pick up weather stuff too, which I always like the NOAA broadcast. It's, it's kind of calming to me. That guy's voice on NOAA is just kind of interesting to me anyway. I can put that on and Kelly always gets mad at me for having the weather radio on. She said, turn that off. It's kind of annoying to her, but not me. Anyway, one other thing I wanted to go over is privacy codes. Um, I believe this advocates the fact that they have, yeah, so this has got 142 privacy codes on this radio. These, these small FRS radios have 121 privacy codes, and what that means is those are what's known as PL tones. Um, they're also known as CTCSS. I think PL tones is a Motorola trademark. Um, basically, PL tones or the CTCSS runs from uh, I did write it down so I did not forget it. 1 through 38 and DPL, which is another Motorola trademark, or CDCSS, I can never remember those, um, runs through 39 through 121. So what those are is just a, it's a sub-channel basically. So let's say I was operating on channel 1 and somebody else was talking on channel 1 too because these are obviously frequencies that anybody can use. Obviously anybody with a license on the GMRS ones, but anybody, period, on FRS. So let's say someone was talking over my conversation, I can set the sub-channel to 1 through 121 and I could technically be having a private conversation from the guy that's breaking up my conversation on channel 1. So it would be like 1 with a little 21 above it um, is how we would set that. It's not really a, 
Um, there's, not, there's no crypto involved in it. There's nothing like that. What, basically what it gives you is a way to, to have that subchannel. But anybody that programs in the subchannel, like 1-21, uh, can also hear what you're saying there too. So it's just a way of kind of getting around um, clogged, congested networks on the FRS or GMRS. So um, anyhow, so the main point was to talk about the, uh, the Midland. Again, this is their GMRS two-way radio. I think it's got a lot of potential. I'm kind of looking forward to installing it in my vehicle and, um, and using it and checking it out. Hey guys, so the next thing I want to talk about is a box from The Feed. You may have seen me wear a Feed shirt on gear tasting before. I'm a big fan of what they do at The Feed. They are a way uh, to try out and experiment with different snacks that are out there on the market. Uh, whether you're into CrossFit, working out, whether you're an athlete, doesn't matter. They're for everybody. Um, but what they do is they offer them in boxes. So you can either buy individual snacks from there just to try out some kind of a onesie twosie kind of thing, um, or you can buy a whole box of things that are recommended by the feed or other companies such as ITS. We actually have our own box there. So sorry, this is some same shameless uh, self-promotion, but I wanted to show you what was in our box offering from the feed. Um, we've had it on there now probably about a year and a half or so. so I've gotten 30 episodes into gear tasting. I haven't talked about it yet, so here we go. I'm talking about it. Um, 31, actually. I think it was 31. Anyway, so they say it's food for athletes, but you know, athletes come in many shapes and sizes and things like that. So this is what we hand-selected to be in our box from the feed. Um, we've even got cool wrapping paper. So uh, first of all, staple sriracha that's in there. And it's not pronounced sriracha. It's sriracha, just in case you're wondering. Uh, we've also got a bar from Epic. Um, and just so you know, we, we kind of put this together based on things that we like. So this isn't just some random offering the feed sent us and said, hey, what do you think about putting this stuff in there? And we say, oh yeah, that sounds good. This is actually stuff that I, that I eat personally on a regular basis when I'm out doing adventures and you know, when I have my North Face shirt on and I'm going on many adventures, I, uh, I like to eat stuff like this that's in this box. So. Um, this is, honest to God, what I like to snack on. So um, this is an epic bar from Bison. This is a bacon and cranberry, which I know sounds a little gross, and Rob's about ready to throw up right there, but I like them. Um, this is a bar called the Bodacious Bar, I think. Yes, Bodacious Blueberry Vanilla from Bearded Brothers. I like these a lot, too. Um, I also swear by these Goo Energy Gels. Um, I've done a few triathlons before. I really don't do those anymore. I don't really like to do them anymore. But when I was riding a lot, um, getting ready for triathlons, I was slamming these goo energies all the time. Um, you know, I kind of uh, would come home at the end of a ride and have sticky goo stuff all over me because I'd suck them down when I was riding. So um, I still kind of swear by these when I'm outdoors too. So I like to include those. And this, had, this is kind of our sample box. So this is, you're only gonna see one of everything in here, but it's a way for you to try out stuff that you may not be familiar with too. That's kind of why we have the offering. Um, and then a can of Kill Cliff for our good friends over at Kill Cliff. A Stinger waffle from Honey Stinger. I swear by these things, I love them. As soon as I, uh, our guy Mike showed me these and I tasted them for the first time, I was sold. These are awesome. Um, now, this might be a little weird to you. This is oatmeal in a squeeze thing, uh, but I swear to God, it's good. Don't, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's good. Um, these are none uh, energy, not energy. Uh, I'm going to have to read it because I can't even remember. Electrolyte, sorry. Electrolyte replacement. So these go in your Camelback or your reservoir or something like that. Or I actually prefer to put them in a bottle rather than put them in my Camelback because I say Camelback. I, I use a source. That's what I use. Um, but I don't like cleaning out my source. I like just dumping the water out and letting it dry. I don't like mixing stuff in my source bladder. Um, then also these half pops are fairly interesting. I tried these a couple of months back. This was, a, this was a sample that somebody at the feed sent me just to check out and I enjoyed them. Um, it's kind of like half pop popcorn, which is, may sound weird and gross, but it's actually pretty good. This is a Chipotle barbecue flavor. It's pretty good. Um, and this is an organic trail mix. Um, they have got organic jumbo Thompson raisins and a bunch of other stuff that I really won't go into. It's a big long list, but I like it. It's trail mix. Um, also primal beef jerky, new primal. This is grass fed beef jerky. So um, if you're really into the grass fed movement, some beef jerky for you. Plus I, I think their packaging looks really cool. Anyway. And then my personal favorite that has to come in a 
containers such as this to keep it cool is the Perfect Bar. So I have been actually eating these things back when they used to come in Ziploc bags in San Diego. So um, it's a San Diego based company. They're made with all natural ingredients, meaning everything in here is not, there's nothing in here that's not uh, organic and good for you or real. So I like, I like eating real stuff. That's just kind of always been my thing. Um, I stopped drinking Dr. Peppers and sodas when I was in high school and I've never looked back since. I've always tried to be conscious of what I put into my body and um, when I was in the Navy I naturally migrated to these because one of my uh, classmates brought one in and said hey man you got to try this and it was literally in a little Ziploc bag and they called them uh, perfect food perfect food bars or perfect foods or something like that back then now they're just called uh, the perfect bar um, but they are extremely delicious. You have to refrigerate them because they're, again, they're all natural. The ingredients need to be refrigerated. So um, you can find them in a lot of uh, Whole Foods and places like that. Um, they're at our local Sprouts. They're in Whole Foods, but they're in the refrigerated section. Um, that's why ship in this bag. But if you get a chance to try one of these out, they're in our box or you can just buy them individually on the feed. Uh, we'll have a link to our stuff in the description too, so you can check it out if you're interested in this box. But um, I want to say this box got a price. So it runs 43 bucks for all this stuff and you can try it out if you want to do it like that or you know obviously everything's individual as well you could try out. So check out the link. Um, again if you're going to try one thing out of here um, and you haven't and you've already tried Sriracha and Killcliff, I would recommend Perfect Foods Bar. Questions over coffee. Just got one today. Wanted to keep it short. This is from uh, Goddess One Princess on YouTube who asks, Your fire kit? It's a question mark, so I'm guessing you want to see my fire kit, and I will show you that. All right, so I've got some stuff laid out. This is kind of how I usually am in the outdoors. I usually have um, a fire knife on me, and I usually have my survival kit. So that, that comprises my fire kit. Um, and just to demonstrate, so this is our ITS survival kit. It's called the MSK Mini Survival Kit. Um, comes just like so. And inside, you will find a couple of things. One are some, uh, these are called a lot of things. They're called boat matches. They're called NATO matches. They're, they're basically waterproof matches that are, um, I've put one of these on a review. It was probably like two years ago now, but it snowed in Texas for some odd reason. And... Uh, I did a little test by lighting one of these and like putting it into the snow and pulling it out and it came back to life. So literally these things are awesome. They'll, they will stay burning even when they're wet. Um, that's why we have them in there. They work. So I will, uh, there's a couple of redundancies in this kit when it comes to fire and we did that on purpose. So um, one is it comes with this ferro rod, two is it comes with the matches I spoke about, and three is it comes with these uh, tinder quick tab. So the combination of all three of these makes a really good uh, mini, mini fire kit in my opinion. So that's kind of what I supplement um, one of these fire knives with. These are available from uh, Mora. Uh, these are Swedish. The blade on here is incredible. We used to actually sell these with our logo on them. Uh, we don't anymore but I would highly suggest one of these and even though we don't sell them I'm still going to push this because it's a fantastic knife. And the reason being is because the back of it has a ferro rod in it and the way that this knife was designed it's got a really nice flat edge on the back so when you put it on the ferro rod it throws a killer spark and hopefully I don't catch the table on fire but the spark that it throws is enormous and I can't recommend it enough so that's kind of like my go-to so if I'm sitting around a campfire I want to get a fire going um, I will usually have some fat wood with me and all this is is if you can imagine a pine tree that's growing and then it dies, all the sap from the pine tree floats down to the bottom, um, basically where the stump is left over when a pine tree falls down. That stump contains fat wood. So this is basically impregnated with resin and that they collect it like this, turn it into sticks. You can buy this at most Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that. 
it's cheap as hell. This, you can get a whole box of this stuff for like five bucks. I'm talking like a box like this. Um, this is what I use to light my fires at home, whether it's in the fire pit or uh, the fireplace inside. I swear by this stuff, it's awesome. So what you can do is carve out a couple of small little sticks of this, then you can kind of get some finer stuff together. Um, it sparks right up with either a ferro rod um, or a match or anything like that. So I can't recommend this stuff enough. This is not in the survival kit, but um, this is a supplemental <clears throat> excuse me, case that we sell. And this is called the MPC. And we have our logo on this. But what I do is I take the contents from our mini survival kit and I add it to, this is my personal survival kit. So I add it to my stuff. So I've got, I supplement this with a little pack of chicken bouillon. Um, I've got some, you know, water purification tabs come in both these things too. But inside here, I also have a small little piece of fat wood, and that's just what I carry around with me, just so I always have that. Um, it's also inherently water resistant because of the resin too, which I like. So then also in this kit, I have one of our brass fire starters, and this is uh, basically just kind of what, you know, the ferro rod does, it's a spark. So I carry that additionally. So with me at all times, I guess I have, you know, four to five different methods of lighting fire because that is one of the Number one priority is when you're in a survival situation um, is getting a fire going, staying warm. Because, you know, the rule of threes, you can, you can live uh, three hours without shelter, three days without food, and three, uh, sorry, three days without water, and three weeks without food. So um, that's kind of how I like to, what did I say that wrong? You're looking at me like, all right. <laughs> Sometimes I mess that up, so I think I got it. Um, at any rate, um, the way these work, obviously the matches are just a match. It comes with the striker. It's pretty self-explanatory. Showed you how the fire knife works. Um, a ferro rod is, you know, I showed you how the knife ferro rod works. This is much the same way. So in the mini survival kit, we have one of these little FRSs, which is a folding razor saw. So you can actually use the razor blade or the um, saw blade to spark this ferro rod too. So there's, a, there's something in the kit to spark that with. So, and then this um, can be used in conjunction um, with the tinner quick tabs. I've got a couple over here that I already have out, so I don't have to mess mine up in my kits. So what you do with the tinner quick is you basically fluff the end of it like that. Um, you take your starter just like that and light it up. So they're really easy to, uh, to uh, light. They will work in kind of moist environments, but if you I mean, if you get them sopping wet, they're not going to work. So that's why there's redundant methods of starting fires within our kits, too. So um, that is what I carry in my fire kit. Thanks for watching Gear Tasting. If you have any questions about what we went over in today's episode, leave your comments below. Be sure to check the description for everything we talked about. We put a vast amount of links in there for you to check out. Um, as well as if you have any questions that you'd like answered on Gear Tasting, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network. We will find them and get them answered on the show. And if you're liking or digging or what do we say? If you're digging what we're doing. If you're digging what we're doing, consider joining the membership and allow us to give you back something in return. Thanks again. <laughs>